Welcome. And just like the thumbnail says, this is the secret to Roger Federer's success. It's a target system, a target-oriented system. And if you look at this, if you memorize it, you learn it, and you go watch Roger Federer play, you will see this all day long, every match, every year consistently. Now, I don't think that this is the be-all, end-all, but this is a very important system. It is the first time that it's been released on YouTube. I've never seen in all my years of watching tennis, being on YouTube, playing tennis. And it comes from the greatest tennis book of all time, which I have many videos on. So let's take a look here. This isn't the best uh, delineation of the target system, but I have other videos. As I said, you can go watch them. You can see the you can see it there. So basically, what we have is we have one target here in the back, two in the corners, two on the sides, and one large target here in the front. And this middle target here, we're going to try to avoid. Now, each one of these, each one of these uh, targets has uses in a match, and I'm not going to explain them in this video. I will explain in a future video the uses, just to give you an example. You probably heard this before. This back zone here is the rally zone. This uh, target here could be used as a passing shot. And these two corners in the back could be hit for winners. This is where you would hit winners, generally speaking. Now this also can be, um, this is also a flexible system. So this line here in the back can be moved up here. It's a little bit deep. That's, that's. Uh, the, the system or the targets that I have laid out here in this video uh, are probably a little difficult. This this middle target can be drawn in so that uh, these outside targets are a lot larger, maybe for more beginner players. Uh, but generally speaking, this is the this is the layout, and uh, let's get into. It. I'm just going to show you some points, me and my friend, and. Uh, See how this works. So pretty much right away, it's done pretty good. Not perfect, but um, pretty good job here. A couple things I want to mention. Come back here to the serve. The first ball he hits is in the middle of the red zone there where you don't want to hit but he's hit it so so hard that it can still be effective and that's something that can be that you often see players do they skip out on this system because they're hitting so hard that they can get away with temporarily they can get away with hitting to the wrong targets so here you can see my opponent makes a nice little slice to this target here it's going to keep him safe there's not much i can do and then the perfect overhead to the corner for a winner. Absolutely no one in the world that's going to get that ball back. Here he does it again. Plays hard to, hard to the middle because he can get away with that. And then an excellent shot here. You could argue that that's kind of in the corner for a winner. But again, he he's using speed. More speed than more target at this point. There's me with a deep, hitting the target, nice deep return. Not a lot of pace, but it's still effective because I hit the target. There's a good example. I play to the middle, kind of make a mistake there in the return, and then he's going to try to put that ball away. He hits the corner. Back it up here. So this is just a collection. We're really, we're, re I'm really only scratching the surface of how this works. When you hit these targets, and this is what made Roger Federer a part of the reason why Roger, I'd say the main reason why he was so dominant, is when you when you're able to hit these targets in many different situations, you control the game, you control the court against anybody. 
doesn't matter who's on the other side. So here I am with the return. Kind of missed it, but still in a good spot here on the side. Makes a difficult shot for my opponent. I get that middle ball. I hit one of my targets again. And you can see how effective it is. I'm not even really hitting. I didn't hit this target here in the corner, but I hit one of my, my targets that are going to be effective. And it was still almost a winner. So not getting too much into it in this uh, in this video, but you can also there are targets for the serve. You can see uh, you can see my serve here. You hit this target. You don't even have to really hit the serve very hard. And there it is. It lands right about there. So if you draw a line right here, if you hit inside that line, you're pretty you're pretty good. You're pretty safe. You can draw a line here. And this is much different from the larger target system that most most people use, which is probably why they uh, are crushing forehands and backhands, where you would maybe divide the service box into two. You might divide the court into two. You have this huge target to hit to. That's not going to allow you to really control your opponent. This is a good one here where you can see we get into a cross court rally and my opponent actually does it very well. Let's back it up here. So we get to a little it gets a little inside out, gets into an inside out position. First ball here, nice pace, nothing I can do. Nice backhand, tough backhand still hits the target to control to control the court. Allows me to hit a little drop shot. You can see I hit the target. I nail it. And he makes a nice shot and wins the point. When you have both players doing this, there is again that serve. But when you have both players doing this, it makes for a really interesting game. Makes it very difficult to beat your opponent when, when, when both of them are using this or to win the game. Excellent return to that second target there. There he goes with the inside out again. Hits that deep target. Hits the short short target. And you see this. This is what you're seeing when you're seeing on TV. When they're playing these cross-court rallies. It's not just cross-court. They're trying to use these targets to figure out, in most cases, how to combine them to take advantage. Now you can see here's another interesting another interesting point. When you do this, you know what your opponent is going to do when you understand this. Or you have better anticipatory skills. So here, even though my return is in the middle of the court, I know from experience you can see me anticipate this ball. And I'm able to get that back rather than have it be a winner. Now I do hit it out, but... I'm able to get it back on close to the target zone here and actually switch the switch the scene and take control. Great return there to that deep target. Then I'm going to go Watch this again, how I use the targets to control my opponent. There's the first ball. Second ball, second target there. So we here, here, just kind of combining them, putting them together. There's the third. And then finally the fourth. I get my drop shot. 
And something else to say, I just want to add here with this, this drop shot business. You know, I've been taught, I was taught that if you get it to the ball to bounce twice within the box, it's a good drop shot. But take a look at this. I'm not adding like crazy spin. It's just good timing. Uh, I hit the right target. That's the key. That's what they don't tell you. You hit this target. If you hit this target, you don't have to, you don't, it doesn't matter how many times the ball, the ball is going to bounce. Look at that. A hundred times within the box. But they always, they always leave that out. They always leave the target out for some reason, even though that's the secret. Here's a nice serve. A nice serve, and then to the other side. Same thing. There, those, you know, there's always the advice: hit the serve, and then hit to the other side. Well, it's not hit to the other side; it's hit to this target, and that's going to give you, that's going to focus you, dial you in on what you're trying to do. Here, I a little, it was a tough, tough shot, a little miss hit, but I'm still able to hit that target. And even if that was a miss hit, now I know, I know what he can do based on this target. And then I make the pass. As I said, this is going to be used for passing shots. All you got to do is hit that target. If he, if he makes the play, he makes the play. It's a great shot. There he gets that third ball again. And he hits it hard. It's interesting to watch my partner do this because he's learned this maybe intuitively, maybe through playing players like me. Uh, but you can see how well he does it, and he would not be able to explain this in this way. That's two, three, and then four. This is how you win points. And these volleys, they're not easy. This guy, uh, as I say in previous videos, he hits hard. He hits with a lot of spin. That was an easier one, but look at that. Hit the target, it's over. Here I'm in a, a bad position on a volley. If you think that wasn't intentional, look again. On the return, you can see two in a row there. I hit that deep, deep target. If you're good at this, you can do this all day long. Of course, it's a little, it can be risky, you know, with the return. There's a pass. I think I thought that was out, but you can see here he sets up for the pass. All he has to do is hit the target. There's nothing I can do here. No one in the world is going to get that. I make a good play at that. We see plays of this target. It's a shorter ball, plays with this target. Nothing I can do.
you know, in here, sometimes they make a good play. But you understand what's going on. You give him his credit where it's due. See that there? That's a good play by my partner. I'm satisfied with just hitting that target. Hey, if he makes a great play, then then good good play for him. And here's this, when you're playing volleys, this is uh, interesting too. You can see here, I get my, I play serve and then I go to, to, to volley, serve and volley. And I'm thinking as long as I, you know, I'm not worried about my volley. Like how am I playing the volley? How am I moving? If I hit this target here, which I do, I know I'm in a good position. He made a great he made a great shot there. No need to hit, you can see, no need to hit that uh, overhead hard. I just hit this spot here. It might sound like I'm hitting it hard. I hit a decent decent pace. But I'm thinking right there, I'm thinking hit that target and it's over. And I nail it. Now here, a uh, nice example there. It looks like I'm hitting my partner. But I am hitting it towards my partner. I'm using that back target. 